so in the third chapter you argue that this stratification of muslim along the lines of arab and non arab it it has nothing to do with hinduism infecting the islam as it is alleged re repeatedly but in fact inherent to the islamic faith and the world view this is what is being claimed in the book how did you conclude the later because anything inherent to islam you should trace back to its earliest teachings uh, you have given examples of the divisions existed that, that that existed in the society but i don't find a supporting material over there okay so here is where so what you're referring to is the reference to the existence of 80 different castes in the muslim community as part of the census that was undertaken in bengal around 1872 to that period and then 1882 so on and so forth so here you must connect it to the uh, initial section of the book that deals with dehlavi i'm so sorry so in dehlavi's uh, portion what i constantly point out is his decision to treat the world as being divided into two different classes and his constant insistence on his arab identity and remember that he had by then i think he was perhaps a third generation descendant who had lived in bharat by then and still he did not think of himself as a bharatiya he thought of himself as an arab now coupled with that i am also trying to show that it is uh, so you there is a fundamental problem in the framing of your question so let me explain how this works assume that there are x number of let's say castes or communities based on professions in this country the arab muslim mentality effectively works on the basis that uh if i were to marry the top order of a particular society and it were if it's my blood which fix it which fuses with the other person's blood i will then decide their position in my community based on who they are in their communities now assuming that it is an egalitarian mindset and an egalitarian society my position and my community should make no difference the moment i have converted to your faith whether forcibly or peacefully second the notion of an ashraf or an ajlaf or an arzal should not have existed now if that segregation existed prior to their interaction with the bharatiya civilization then that means my prior existence as a caste has made no difference to that stratification if that state of affairs and the distinction has existed before then there is no reason that i will attribute that stratification to their community let's say their their interaction with hindus what is the proof that caste system of hinduism infected islam that would be, that proof would be when ajlaf arzal and ashraf came for the first time into existence only after its contact with the hindu civilization which is not the case they have applied this uniformly across the world in their interactions with the uh, after the conquest of persians this is the logic the language would differ i have given this example perhaps in my first discussion here in 2017 i told you the origins of the word mawala mawali it comes from the origins of the conquest of uh, of persia by arab muslims so that means in every society that you go and you conquer you then create a second class citizenry as a category and you then identify how is that possible after conversion there should be no concept of a class there should be no concept of a caste there should be no class system at all but if it exists in one of his popular debates christopher richens actually confronted uh um uh, a diasporic iranian to say is it possible for a non arab to become the supreme leader of iran or a non ashraf she said no why should one particular ethnicity occupy the top order if according to you ethnicity caste and class don't make a difference to your faith system that argument has never been asked so i am willing to concede that the existence of the caste system even before let's say the jati varna system if not the caste system prior to the muslims certainly let's say it's it's a reality i am not blaming it on them but its continuity after someone's conversion to islam cannot be attributed to hindus so that you will also have to discuss along with what i've said on the on the myth called the ganga jamni tehzeeb and what it actually translates to and fortunately i'll be supported in this particular regard by dr ambedkar but i'll leave the discussion for later please